Okay, for the algebraic manipulation test, which is our last normal test that we have. Uh, and then after that, we have the cumulative test, which will kind of like be a sort of a mini review for the final because it covers four of your tests. Uh, it's a bigger than usual cumulative. That'll happen. Well, the test is tomorrow. Then we have a couple days of review, uh, which will be, let me think, Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday of this coming week, this week, this week right now, this Friday is the next big cumulative test. So we have a lot to learn between now and Friday. This stuff uh, has a lot of log equations which can be rewritten. I want to make sure you know how to do a rewrite. Would you please just rewrite that? If you can rewrite that into a log, you'll pretty much be done. Whenever you're stuck on one of these problems, if x isn't alone yet, try rewriting it and see if that helps. It doesn't take very long. So this will be log, and what's the base? Well, this is the base. And then what's the exponent? That's the exponent, but the base is 1 half. And then you never go to the exponent next. You always go over to the other side and say 5. And then you come back, and it equals x. Is x alone? Yes. Would you be expected to change 1 half, or sorry, 5 into 1 half to the something? No. That would be pretty much impossible. But if that had been an... 8, then I would have expected you to be able to go further. So let's just see what that would have looked like. Let's say it was log base 1 half of 8. How could you go further? You could rewrite the 8 as 1 half to the something. Not 2, close. 1 half to the something. Figure it out. Give it a second. Let people think. So you're trying to make this in the 1 half to the some power. Because if I can do that, the question mark will be the answer. That's a tough one. Oh, it can. It can be done. So really what I'm saying is 8 to some power, I'm going to not say x because that confuses the issue. I'm going to say n. 8 to the some power is got to equal, no, no, sorry, 1 half to the some power. I don't know what power it is. has to equal 8. Well, first thought is, do you get that the at one half has to be built up to be bigger numbers? So I need to put this to the third power. But then it'll be one over eight, and it's close. So what's the answer? Negative. And so the final answer would be negative what? Three. So I can really make that eight into one half to the negative three power. Like that. So the final answer is x must be negative three. All right, let's do another one like that. Let's say it was, this is the simplest of all of them. You rewrite the 25 as 5 squared, and therefore the answer is 2. All right, so how now, brown cow? All right, you, you say negative, so it flips, and then you take the square root, and so this really becomes 5 to the negative, what? 2. So the final answer is negative 2. You get that? All right, let's try another one similar. Uh, 1 half to the 2x equals 1 16th to the x minus 4. Try that. Well, don't try a rewrite. That would really get confusing. What you want to do is say, if these only were the same base, then I could just cancel those bases. So make them so they are the same base. I could see two different approaches. I could see some people saying, I'd like to use 2 as the base for both of them. You could do that. Because 1 half can be a 2 to the negative 1, right? And this is that way. That could be 2 to the what power would make it 1 16th? Negative 4th. And this way would work just fine. And then my basis can cancel and I set this equal to that. But I bet a lot of you used 1 half as the base. It actually makes more sense because one of them already is 1 half. We don't even have to touch the left side. It's just 1 half to the 2x still equals, how do I make 1 half to a power into 1 16th? 
One sixteenth, one half to the what? Not negative, because that would make it flip and be a whole number. We want it to be a fraction. Just fourth, just fourth, one half to the fourth is sixteenth, one sixteenth. And then it's x minus four. Did you get that? Because this is one sixteenth. All right, so now, cancel, cancel, and then 2x equals 4x minus, yes. And I was just going to say 4x minus 4 would be a really common mistake. But this has to be distributed to both parts. And then if you can't solve that, then I know we can all have a little brain block from time to time. But my point is, this is simple algebra. From here, you're supposed to be beyond that. Take away 2x from both sides the way I would do it, because you get rid of the smaller one. There is another way, but... And then I'm going to add, sorry, uh, then I'm going to add, subtract, add 16, there we go, 16 equals 2x, so x has to equal 8. There we go. Either way, your answer comes out to 8. Okay, let's do a u substitution, the hard kind. Log x squared plus log x to the fifth is equal to negative 4. You should know to do a substitution because, oh, there's a quadratic in there because there's something squared and a number and something not squared. Yeah. And this is not squared. It's, the 5 is going to go down in front. Don't forget that. Too. I'm going to pause for a minute while you do that. So here's how you'd start this one. You'd notice that this and this would be a lot nicer if they were just a u. So I'm going to say u squared plus u to the no, 5u. Bring the negative 4 over to the other side, makes it positive 4, equals 0. Why did I set it equal to 0? Because quadratics always have to be set to 0. Whether you can use quadratic formula on it or you're going to factor it, you've got to set it equal to 0. And now I'm going to factor this. It happens to factor x plus 4, x plus 1. Right? I think? Yep. Okay. Final answer, x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1. Or not? No. No, because we have only begun. Now we have to go back and do the unsubstitution. Because we let u equal log of x, now u is log of x. As I, I should have used a u. I should have used a u. So now I'm going to substitute that back in and say log x equals negative 4 and log x equals negative 1. And oh, wait a minute, there's a negative in the problem. So these are both extraneous, right? No, you're not allowed to have negatives only here and here in the base and the argument and this spot can be negative so then i have to somehow get the x alone whenever you're stuck my advice is think one word rewrite i'm going to rewrite this 10 to the negative fourth it doesn't always fix it but a lot of times it does and x is alone look at that 10 to the negative one equals so 10 to the negative one equals x and x is alone would i have to know what these were yes 10 to the negative fourth is 1 over 10 to the fourth, which is 1 over 10, uh, 1 with four zeros. And this is a 1 over plain old 10. And there are my two answers. If I really cared about my grade, I'd go back and check them, because often one of them is extraneous. In this case, they are both going to work. But I'm telling you, so oftentimes one of them doesn't. What? How do you check it? So you take 1 tenth, for instance, and you stick it back in here. Yeah, I chose the easier one because I want to save time. One tenth, one tenth, and then I ask myself, "Oh, this is base ten, right?" So if this is base ten and this is a one tenth, that's like ten to the negative one, and so this whole part is negative one. Negative one squared is one. Plus this part, that part right there is negative one because ten and this one tenth could be written as ten to the negative one, so it's negative one, negative one. Oh, wait a minute, and that 5 can go out in front of it, so 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. It's supposed to equal negative 4, and look, it actually works. Now I know 1 tenth actually worked. And you could do the same thing with the 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever it is. 1 over 10,000 would actually also work. It would just be 10 to the negative third, and then it would be negative 3 squared. And Anyway, okay, moving on. Yes, question? Uh, this is kind of a gray area. I always like to get it to here just because I know that that's for sure simplified as far as possible. But if you had everything perfect and you had both these answers and I knew that you had checked to make sure that they weren't extraneous, then I'd probably be fine with you leaving them that way. Okay, 
So let's try a different kind of use substitution, a little harder kind. I'm going to pause for just a second here. Okay, I jimmied that one a little bit so that it would work nicely. It'll factor now. All right, so do we use substitution? Have you, I take it you've never heard that saying before. It's actually a saying. So you should notice, oh, this is one of these deals with something squared, something that's not been squared, and then a number, and that's quadratic. And therefore, let, uh, apparently I can't spell let, let, still can't spell let, too much caffeine this morning, let u equal e to the x. Then here's the e to the x part. And it's still got to be squared. Oh, that's right, because it's squared. 5u squared minus 9u, because this part is a u now, minus 2 equals 0. And then this, I think, I hope, I set it up so it would factor. Can anybody verify that it does factor? Yes. Okay, excellent. 5u and u. I know it has to start that way. And since it's a 2, it's pretty obvious it's got to be a 2 and a 1. The only question is where. And since I need an answer that's fairly big in the middle, then the outside needs to probably be the 2. And then I go 5 times 2 is 10, and i got to take away 1, so that must be the negative 1. There we go, right? No, nope. Nine. Poop. Positive 9, negative 1 makes, oh, that makes positive 9. I see what you're saying. So whenever that happens, you get the exact opposite of what you want. Change the signs to the exact opposite. There, now I'm going to double check it. Outside, negative 9. Inside, positive 1. Overall, no, so outside is negative 10. Positive 1 makes negative 9. There. Phew. Okay. And now, final. 5u plus 1 equals 0. 5u equals negative 1. u equals negative 1 fifth. Am I done? No. There's the other side. u minus 2 equals 0. u equals negative. No. u equals 2. Am I done? No, because I have to do that substitution back again. So then now... Where this helped me and make it less complicated, now i got to make it more complicated. So e to the x and e to the x. And how do I solve it when the x is in a weird place? Rewrite it. This is log base e, and yes, it would be okay to write that, but it's even smarter to write what? Ln. And then you jump to the other side, negative 1 fifth equals x. And you should notice something about that. Extraneous, because that is not allowed. Can't have a negative there. How many of you knew that? Raise your hand. Be honest. It's about three-fourths of the class. Okay. And the other one-fourth would have been crying over, all I forgot was it was extraneous. And Marzano's doing it to me again. Anyway, so now it's log base E or LN, I'm going to use this time, of 2 equals X. Is that one allowed? Yes, it is. Can you simplify that? No, not unless you know what L, the natural log of 2 is. Log base E of 2. Don't we probably have that one memorized, so then that's it. Done. There's your answer. And that one was extraneous. Okay, that's the kind of difficult stuff. Now let's do some of the other stuff that's like little putsy stuff that people forget sometimes. Let's say it says 3 log uh, of 10. They oftentimes will leave it that way because they think, oh, I'm done. Can't, like, simplify that anymore. Oh, yes, you can. What's log 10? What's that base? No, what's the base? Guys in the back? No, no. Okay, there's a 10 down there, so then that's a 1. So it's really 3 times 1, so the answer is 3. Much simpler than 3 log 10. Okay, here's another one for you. Let's say it's like this, log 10 to the third. What's the answer to that? 3, because this is really a 10 down here. Okay, could I write that as 3? Yeah, except now you got to simplify that and make that a 1, so that's 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, how about this? Uh, 2 log 5. Is there any way to simplify that? If there is, I don't know it. 
The only thing I could do is write it differently. It might not be simpler, but what could you write it as? Log of 5 squared. So log of 5 squared, which would be the same as log 25. I'd agree with that. But I don't know that's really much simpler. Okay, how about if I had a, let's say, uh, uh, 3 up here. Now, could I bring that 3 down the front? Yes, you can. It gets times by this front number is the main thing I was trying to get to. And so then it becomes 6 log 5. Yes, you can bring a number like that down to the front, and it does multiply. Okay. Um, there's going to be a lot of this kind of stuff where you have to handle... Um, uh, let's just make it X. Uh, that kind of stuff. You like those change of base ones? Good. Would you use 5? For the base, or would you use one fifth for the base? How many of you'd rather use five? Totally okay. How many would rather use the one fifth? That's about half and half, in fact. So I'll show it with five. You'd make this five to the negative one because that's the same as one fifth. And this is five squared. Two x plus three. I, I think that might actually be easier. True. Use twenty five for a base. Okay. So let's say use twenty five for the base. The right side doesn't need to change. How could I rewrite a one-fifth as a twenty-five? It does make it a little harder there. Negative one-fifth to the, or wait, twenty-five to the negative what? Negative two? There you go. Negative one half. As long as you don't screw up something like that, then sure, that way's great. And then this cancels and this cancels. And Oh, wait, where'd the x go? Uh, one half x. And there we go. Okay, so now that equals that, and I'm done. So, and the last one I'll show you is the one fifth as a base. So, this one doesn't need to change, so that's always good. And this one becomes a one fifth to the what? To the negative two. And then you go two x plus three. That might be the easiest. It really is a judgment call. As long as you know there's multiple ways to do it. This one, a lot of people forget to multiply that second one out. They'll go negative 4x and then they'll say plus 3. And it's really minus 6. Because you have to do this times this. All right, so then x would... Uh, wait a minute, I've got to get rid of x on both sides. So I'd have 0 equals negative 5x minus 6. And then I add 6 to both sides. 6 equals negative 5x. And then I divide by negative 5 and I get 6 fifths negative. There we go. All right, we're getting close to lunchtime. Um, I think it's uh, not close enough to leave, but I think it's close enough. I'm going to hand out this worksheet now. And remind me before we are done here. Problem six and seven on this worksheet, I need to change because they are misprints. Okay, raise your hand if you need this worksheet because you are not here on Friday. All right, anybody in this row? Anybody in this row? Hand these back. Anybody in this row? Did you take one? Did you need one? Okay, well, why didn't you raise your hand? Because you were talking. Raise your hand if you need it in this row. One person. All right. Raise your hand if you need it on this row. Okay, then raise your hand if you need this worksheet. This is not that complicated, people. There we go. And two people in this row. It's because you didn't raise your hand then. All right. Oh. Okay, here we go. The ones you need to change are number six and seven. Look at number six for just a moment. It says a bunch of stuff, blah, 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 equals, after the equal sign on number six, change it to this. It should just say LN7. It has an extra thing in there. It should just say that. And on number seven, same deal. Problem seven, the front part's all fine. At the end of it, change it to equal LN6. What you're setting up on those is where there'll be an LN on both sides. And you'll be able to just go cancel, cancel like this. But you got to get it down to a single LN on 
that side of the equation. That's what's happening in both 6 and 7. Okay, so let's get started on number 1 right after lunch. Okay, we're back from lunch. Here we go, number 1. Pay attention, here we go. So first thought, that probably would be smart to rewrite this with a common base, right? So what would a good common base be? Uh, uh, the base, the base though. 25. 25, okay, I agree. We should leave it as 25 because this other one can be written as a 25. But the problem is it's going to not be super simple. First I've got to shrink it down to be a 5. And then I go go 5 squared. And so, so then it'll be like 25. And I gotta really want that to be the square root of itself, which would make it 5. And then I want it to be negative so that it can be a fraction. And then I want to take that square root of 25, which would be 5, and then I want to cube it. So it'd have to be negative 3 halves. So you have to do all that in your head. But if you can do that, then this will be easy from here. You just have to cancel these bases, write this out. But there is, I contend that a lot of people would rather have gone like this. Make it a 5 base. Because I know some of you are like, how on earth did that just happen? 5 squared, I know you can do that. And then how do you make that into a 5? It's easier. You take 5, negative makes it flip, 1 over 5, and then the third power makes it 125. So that would definitely be easier. And either way, cancel these. i got to go that, 4 minus 2x, and this, negative 6x plus 3 and then when I'm all done solving, I get my answer as an X. All right, so that's the way I'd probably recommend if you're not awesome at this. If you're awesome at this, you could have got that two-thirds. Excuse me. <clears throat> that goes away. Can you think, like, I know we're in the work time here, but I'm, that's not good. Okay, so moving on, um, let's try number two. A lot of people get stumped on number two because they think they got to somehow make this common base. And if you have to make a 3 into a common base with this, how on earth would you do it? Well, that's tough. So I wouldn't. So is another way. One word. Rewrite. Rewrite this thing. Log base 1 fourth is, or of 3 is x over 5. And then remind yourself that all you're trying to do is solve, which means get the x alone. Is it alone yet? No. Multiply by 5 and it will be. And no, you don't have to go any further with this. You don't know what this is. That's okay if you don't know what that is. This is a no calculator test. You're not expected to have that memorized, so there we go. I think you were thinking that this is a power. That's not a power. So I think that's as far as we go right there. That's done. All right, let's move on to number three. That one can have a common base, except... Oh, wait, no, it can't. What's your first step on number three? How do you get rid of the six? Divide both sides by six. And when you divide by six, divide by six, this cancels off. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. Now, once again, this would be a tough one to try to get to be a common base. You could actually, but it'd probably be a lot easier to just rewrite it. Log base 1 eighth of 4 equals x over 4. And now it's so close to being done. Now this one can, we can get this further. We can definitely do this common base thing. I could rewrite that 4 as a 1 eighth, this is going to be a little tricky now, 1 eighth to the something. Negative 1 half? Negative 1 third. Let me see if that's right. 1 eighth to the negative 1 third. Oh, that's close. Negative 3 halves. Okay, I can try that. So then negative makes it flip, so that would make it 8. And then the square root of 8. No, that's not going to work. Okay, here's what you're, what you're trying to say, though, is that the 4 can be rewritten as a 1 eighth to the negative 3 halves power. Are you saying that that answer will come out to 4? I don't think it will. I think if we make it 2 thirds, it might. Well, you twitched it back and forth. First you said that, and then you said the other thing. Anyway, now let's see if it's right. I just keep, I'm the guy who keeps on checking your answers. That one didn't work. Let's try this one. 
So now, if we take the cube root of this one, it would be 1 over 2. And then we square that, which would be 1 over 4. And then we flip that, which would be 4. Yes, it worked. So, this is a tough one. It's kind of on the edge of too tough. Like, it wouldn't realistically be one I don't think we'd ask you to do. Now, all of that's to, to be said so that that side is negative 2 thirds. So then negative 2 thirds equals x over 4 times some by both sides by 4, like this. And then x is alone, and it equals negative 8 thirds. That was a tough one, no doubt. Yeah. Yes, you could have used a base too. All right, let's move on to a different kind of question completely. Let's move on to number six. Remember, number six is one where we changed it to end with ln seven. So here's what the question should look like on number six. ln x minus four, that's an n, and then plus ln x plus two, I see a quadratic setting up here, equals ln seven. So then, these can be combined together, and they make ln of x minus 4 times x plus 2, and that's ln 7, and that's cool because now I can cancel the logs. And now that should look like a quadratic to you. x squared outside plus 2 inside minus 4 makes minus 2x. Last is minus 8 equals 7. Add 7 to both sides. x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Why did I set it equal to 0? Because I know that's how you do quadratics. Uh, you are correct. I think I just should have said negative 15 right there. Did anybody agree or disagree with that? Okay. All right. Then next thing is parentheses, parentheses equals zero. And now I have x and x. And how do I get a 15 to make a 2? 5 and 3 does have a chance to make a 2. So let's go a 5 and a 3. And then one's got to be negative. I want the bigger one to be negative so my middle term can be negative. That seems like it just worked. I'm going to check outside, inside, positive 3, negative 5, negative 2. Works good. So then I'm done. x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. Is there any last little substitution I have to do? No, we never did let u equal whatever. So this is it. It's done. Now, is there a chance one of these might not work? Ah, go back up in here. If I put in a negative 3, do you see how this will become ln of a negative number? Not allowed. So, cancel it off. Check the other one, just to be sure. If I put in a 5 here, is that going to be okay? 5 minus, minus, 5 minus 4 is a good, no problem there. 5 plus 2 is 7. So then this is going to be ln 1 plus ln 7. Uh, and ln of 1 is actually 0. So 0 plus ln of 7 is equal to ln of 7. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So it worked. So I double checked and one of my answers got thrown out, the extraneous. Okay, so that's a good reminder to check your answers to make sure they work. All right, I really strongly recommend you do this one. All the problems, extra good about doing your homework. Got a couple of reasons for you. Number one, I haven't graded homework in a while, so I'm probably going to take this one tomorrow. Number two, uh, it's the last chance to prepare for the test. And number three, this is your last test. So it's probably a good one to, to try for. All right, that's all I got for you for the video for today.